pleasure of Allah. Oh, you who believe, read the Quran every night of Ramadan. Night of Ramadan. Ramadan Mubarak, and welcome to Ramadan Reminders. I'm Yusuf Estes, reminding myself and you of the importance of the time that's slipping away from us so quickly. I know that when I look up at the moon I, tonight and I'm saying, uh-oh, what's happened to this month? It seems like it just started the other day. In fact, I was thinking, if, if this month goes any faster, then tomorrow night will be the end of it. Because <laughs> it just seems like we just started. And this is normal. You know how? Because the Prophet wasallam, Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, taught us that in the last days, that the time is going to go very quick. The days are going to be very short and go very quick. But it's only going to be noticed by the believers. So there's a reminder right there, isn't it? Some of the things that we're supposed to be doing this month, of course, are reading and memorizing the Quran. Allah sent the Quran down in this month, the month of Ramadan. And when Allah sent it down, He sent it all down at once, just over the Kaaba. And the, you know, the first heaven, it's right above us. And then, piece by piece, He sent it to the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, for a period of 23 years. It means that Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, did not have to memorize the whole Quran in one night, which would be amazing, wouldn't it? And as he received it, he had understanding with it. So there is learning how to say it, pronounce it, you know, recite it. Then there's the memorization of it. And then along with that, though, the most important thing is to get the benefit of the knowledge that goes with it. What benefit would it be to just say something you don't even know what you're saying? Because at that stage... I think you're just making sounds. And what value would that be? The real value of the Quran is to know and understand the meaning behind it and then to put that into our lives. Put it into practice so that the Quran becomes living inside of me and I begin to respond to the things around me in my life according to the way Allah wants me to. Now that sounds like a pretty big task and I think I need help. So this is why we wanted to have this program to remind ourselves and you each of the days of Ramadan. But even more, to make it so that any time of the day or night that you could go to the internet and get today's reminder. So this is why we're encouraging you to go to our website at RamadanReminders.com That's RamadanReminders.com when you sign up there, you're going to be able to enter your email in, and then one by one, we can be sending you a reminder each day according to what you wanted. If you'd like to learn the Quran, if you want to learn more hadith, more du'as, more dhikr of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, remembering Him and what you do. All of this and more is right there, especially the chance to know what the reminder was for the day, because maybe you can't come here every day and watch the program, although we hope you can. I wanted now to turn to what the Imam's reading tonight in the Tarawih Salah. This being the 13th day, this is the 13th Jews of the Quran. If your Imam's keeping up with it that way, they don't have to, but if he does. And this is, I'm going to go to uh, the Surah Ibrahim, and that's the chapter for the Prophet Abraham, peace be upon him. And it's in number 14 in Surahs. And it's in the 13th part of the 30 parts of the Quran. And here it starts out in saying that Alif Lam Ra, you know, the others that we started out with said Alif Lam Mim, this is Alif Lam Ra. It said this book, which was revealed to you, and it's talking about the Prophet Muhammad, that you might bring mankind out of the what? The Lulamat, which is darkness, and into the what? The nur, the nur by by idnila, by the permission of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It's the path to the exalted in might. 
the one that's all praiseworthy. Allah, to whom belongs the heavens and the earth and whatever is in between. And woe to the disbelievers about a severe punishment. The ones who prefer the worldly life over the hereafter and they distract and take people away from the way of Allah, seeking to make what they're, the, the path to Allah look deviant to them, and they're the ones in extreme area, error. One of the things a lot of people ask me about is music. What about music, they'll say. Is it haram, is it halal, or is it makhru? A lot of that depends, really, on what you mean by music and then what you do with it after you get into it. Because if somebody was in the elevator and they heard music while they were going down the elevator, walked away from it, okay, it's not their fault, their fault, number one, so you can't blame them for something that's not their own intention. But number two, just the time they're in the elevator and hearing it, obviously is not going to damage them, hopefully. But when a person goes down to the local music store and purchases a CD or a DVD and goes home and puts it on their computer or their Walkman, whatever, and they start listening to that over and over and using their time so they can memorize the words to a song so they can have that tune going in their head, ah de da de do do you know. Then at that stage, what do you think? Because Allah has told us clearly in the Quran, the value of memorizing this <clears throat> and putting it to work in our lives. And how can I do that when I'm spending all my time worrying about music? Of course we know that there are obviously going to be things about music that are totally haram. Then there are going to be things that might be permissible in some circumstances, like at a wedding or like at the time of a big celebration, like maybe at the Eid or something like that, and they pull out what's called the duff, you know, the little drum thing, and tap on that to keep a rhythm, and people are rejoicing and having a good time. This is one subject. But when somebody brings out a, a whole orchestra or a band, and they've got microphones and speakers, and they're going all night long, rah, 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 it doesn't matter even if they said, it's nasheed about Allah. It's nasheed about Allah. I've heard people say that. But after four or five hours and they're missing the salah, it happened in a masjid I was visiting one time. They preempted the speakers and said, no, we want to keep going with the nasheed. It's so, look how many people are coming. They all want to hear the nasheed. So they told the speakers to wait. Well, we had to sit over there and wait. And these guys are singing and going on and beating their drums. <laughs> I went on and on. But then when it was time for the salah, Nobody stopped these guys. They kept going and going. And when I went to the imam, I said, what can we do? He said, I'm asking you, what can we do? They said, I'm not in control. I'm not the manager here. Somebody over me is the director. It's up to him. And he says, let it go. Everybody likes it. I said, it doesn't matter if they like it or don't like it. It's time for salah. And then they came up with the excuse, well, you know, you can delay the isha. I said, two hours? Three hours, you got people, they want to go home. Can't we pray? No, wait till after the nasheed. Well, some of the brothers went outside and make their prayer and they went home. So now I'm going to ask you, what do you think about this kind of music? Do you think that's halal? So it really depends a lot on how something's used. But go to RamadanReminders.com and get more information about this and many of the other subjects that we're talking about through these reminders during the month. Till next time. Peace. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. Oh, you.